The United States and over 60 other countries have called for a safe departure of local and international citizens from Afghanistan. In a joint statement, they said those in power in the country must bear responsibility for the protection of human lives and the immediate restoration of civil order. Just after the Taliban's takeover of the Afghan capital, reaction started pouring in. Former U.S. President has called on his follower Joe Biden to resign over the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan. In a statement, Trump said what Biden allowed to occur in Afghanistan is shameful. Protesters angry at the U.S. decision to withdraw from Kabul marched into Lafayette Square opposite the White House. They held signs aloft denouncing the Taliban and chanted, Save Afghanistan and Biden, you betrayed us. Meanwhile, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called on all parties to exercise the utmost restraint. Guterres will address the Security Council today during an emergency session on the situation in Afghanistan. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says her country plans to evacuate its citizens and about 37 Afghan nationals from Kabul. At a news conference, Ardern implored Taliban to uphold human rights and let foreigners and Afghans leave safely. Earlier, United Kingdom's Prime Minister Boris Johnson said Afghanistan should not become a breeding ground for terror. The British Parliament is being recalled on Wednesday to discuss the situation. For more on this, we are joined by Mr. Arshad Yousafzai, a political analyst speaking to us from Bashavar. Mr. Yousafzai, thank you so much for your time. Now, the Taliban's rapid takeover of Afghanistan uprooted the United States government's assessment, which had said that it would take 90 days for the group to take over Kabul. The pace of their advance surprised many observers, but some believe that it was inevitable. What's your take on this? I think it has even surprised some of the Taliban leaders because in their estimations, they had expected 60 days or two months to take over the whole country. But uh, we have seen that they did it in less than 10 days. And apart from their military strength or will to fight in the country, um, I believe uh, we also have to give credit to one of their senior leaders, uh, Mullah Amir Khan Muttaki, who had been working for many months on uh, trying to convince the opponents uh, in the government and also in the Afghan army and, and military commanders who could have fought the Taliban. So I think uh, the surprise has many hard-working people behind it. All right. Now, Mr. Yousafzai, now after the Taliban's takeover, what future do you see of Afghanistan's political factions and local militias? Well, I don't think that they can survive Taliban now. Uh, they have been disbanded. Their leadership is hiding in other, other countries outside Afghanistan. Uh, those who are staying in Afghanistan have to patch up with the Taliban. Uh, although the Taliban have pardoned everybody, they would not allow anyone to regroup or, or, or try to take up arms against Taliban. And in that case, the Taliban will not be merciful to them anymore. All right. Now, the Afghan citizens are rushing into the Kabul airport to flee the besieged capital. Are their lives in danger despite the Taliban's announcement for amnesty for all? I think the fear remains there because it's uncertainty at the moment. People don't know what is going to happen to them. Uh, there are some unconfirmed reports that people have been dragged out of their houses, although the Taliban are uh, clearly saying that any in any such instances they should be contacted. They have given their phone numbers for emergency contacts. Uh, the people worry that they would be uh, targeted because uh, Taliban are there, the leadership might be sincere and they are giving clear instructions, but uh, it's always possible that uh, the, the ground or the foot soldier cannot be controlled completely. So people are worried, yes. All right. So Mr. Yousafzai, would the international powers accept the Taliban's government or would they impose sanctions on Afghanistan? I think they have to accept the Taliban, uh, given that the Taliban have promised a lot more changes than in their past. And uh, if they were to keep up with the changes or uh, with, with their promises, and if they uh, proceed accordingly, as they have promised, if they allow girls' education, if they provide health facilities equally to all around the people, if they do not take the basic human rights of the people, uh, there should be no way for international community to disband or to, to abandon Taliban. Uh, and uh, the country needs international support. Uh, Taliban are in power now. Uh, if they are willing to, to be peaceful enough, 
if they provide uh, basic human rights to people, why shouldn't the international community help them? All right. Mr. Arshad Yousafzai, thank you so much for speaking to Indus News.